Hey, Wes McDermott here. In this Unity Quick Tip tutorial, I'm going to take you through this example scene here. And this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm actually going to kind of walk you through uh, part of a Unite Conference uh, demo scene that I created. And so uh, what I've been doing the last uh, week or so is I've been working on this demo scene. And you've probably seen this a few times in some of the breakout videos. I've actually been using it a, in a couple different ways. Uh, but I'm actually going to be uh, at Unite this year. And I'm going to uh, do a small talk on using Moto, Substance, and Unity. And so this scene was originally created for the uh, algorithmics rollout of the Substance integration inside of Moto. And so I've kind of been adapting this scene as I go. And so what I had with this scene was um, I ended up creating kind of like this little demo scene here. And uh, what I'm going to show you is, is basically kind of how I put this together in terms of uh, how I got the camera and things like that to work. So what I did was inside the presentation I wanted to uh, basically just kind of do a show off of this scene. So I'm going to go ahead and just play this scene here and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at what's going on here in the camera view as soon as it starts to load up. Here I'll expand the camera view. So here's what we have. We have a nice little kind of camera kind of moving through the scene here. We kind of go up close here in our 3D viewport you can see the camera and we kind of do just kind of like these little sweeping pans here as we kind of get close to the fire and then we kind of move in. The idea is I was just kind of doing this little 10 second video demonstration here just kind of show uh, what the substance textures actually look like in the unity scene and we pass by the particle effects things like that so I'm just kinda of showing off the scene here and so uh, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm just gonna show you how I did this camera move and how I kinda of set this scene up and then so we kind of you know just pulls back here to uh, where you can see the algorithmic sign here laying on the ground uh, and that's the end of it pretty much and so um, there's a couple elements here that I want to cover first I'm going to talk about the camera move itself I'm going to talk about the image effects and the bloom and then I'm also going to talk about the background so here's the scene um, and I've kind of augmented this scene a couple different times uh, the more I've kind of worked with it so what I want to show you first off is uh, how I ended up solving this background so if we kind of just scroll this in here, or excuse me, just maximize our game view here. I'm just going to kind of play this off here just a little bit, and then uh, I'll just pause it here. And so here's our scene. Uh, there's a couple elements. First off, you can see we have this this new background here, and um, I've got kind of like this kind of night sky. I'm going to show you how I did that. And then also I have these kind of depth of field um, effects and stuff like that, and we'll talk about that with image effects. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and talk about this background. So what is this background? If we kind of zoom out, um, this is how the scene was created. So I basically went inside of uh, my 3D application and I created a sphere. Uh, and then as you can see, I selected the bottom polygons and just deleted them. And then I took this dome and I inverted it. Now, if we kind of look at this in a side view here, and let's just look at this in more of an orthographic or an um, isometric view. So um, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to uh, select the left button here on our navigation window, or excuse me, a little nav navigation gizmo here. And that's going to put me kind of in this uh, orthographic view. And so we have this dome. And what I ended up doing was in my 3D program was um, after I selected the bottom polygons and deleted them, I pressed the scale tool. And then I actually started to uh, just adjust the scale on this a little bit. And so what I tend to do with my backdrops is I'll do this. I don't use a perfect um, half or hemisphere um, what I end up doing is I take uh, part of that and then I go through and just kind of squeeze it down a little bit on the um, on the scale here on the Y and what that does is it kind of gives like this little compression effect and it, it kind of makes the sky look a bit more realistic because it gives it a bit more perspective um, when I use this kind of squish dome effect so that's how I ended up bringing in the actual geometry itself and so once I did this I found a map uh, let's see if I can find that guy here it is. So here's the map. Let's tell you what. Let's do this. Let's take this map and well, first off, let's take a look at the geometry. What am I using for the shader here? So uh, what I ended up using was just the unlit. Now I have a thing here called the unlit no fog. Okay, and let me see if I can find that guy in here. Here it is. So unlit no fog. Let's just go ahead and open this up. So this shader does not ship with Unity. What I ended up doing was um, the unlit shader does, and so um, basically it's just going to allow you to take a um, any diffuse texture, and then it's going to allow you to just you know place it on an object, and there's not going to be any lighting. So there's not going to be any kind of um, lighting calculation happening or anything like that. So what I ended up doing is I went out to uh, Unity's site. And and I downloaded the uh, source files for the source shaders. And then I uh, just made a small change to that. Because in this scene, 
I have some fog happening here in this scene. And I think in order to enable that fog, here we go, i just turn on this little picture icon button here, and that'll kind of enable the fog so I can see that in my 3D viewport. So one of the things that was happening is, is I had the fog running in the scene, and it was really messing up this background, because with the fog enabled, um, it was really just kind of washing over my background uh, plane here, and you couldn't see anything. So what I needed to do was fix uh, or change that shader. So if we go back, what I did, like I said, is I downloaded the source shader, and uh, then I just edited it, and I just did something very very simple which was if I can come all the way down here um, see in our shader here this is uh, I believe this is just a surface shader I uh, did a couple things so inside the surface shader you we see that we've got a pass uh, there's two passes in this and so what I did was I just added this small piece of code right here fog let's see if I can zoom in on that actually uh, hold on just a second here uh, Nope, I can't. Okay, so anyways, um, you can see that we have this fog, and then I just set the mode to off. And so I did that in each pass. So we have this pass, uh, and then I think that we have uh, this this pass here uh, where we've got lighting is off, and then again, set the, the fog mode to off as well. And so what that did was, so I saved that shader, uh, set up a new material, and then just added uh, that shader, as you can see here, unlit fog. Um, and you can see the unlit. Uh, it's getting cut off here, but here's my no fog and then here's the uh, texture. So this one right here, so unlit texture, this actually ships with Unity, but if you're using fog in your scene, um, the fog's gonna kinda wash over that. So that's why I added that, uh, that no fog mode, or basically disabled that in the shader. And so that's how I set up this background. Uh, the other thing that we'll do really quickly is just I'm just going to run this here in Photoshop, and I want to show you what this image is. So one of the things that I do um, with this image here was um, or here's how I work all of my sky domes. Uh, let me do just a really quick. Let me go back here. Let me pause this just for a second and open this up in a 3D program. Okay, we're back. I'm actually running this inside of Moto here. So here is that dome I was telling you about. Um, so again, um, created the dome. Uh, Flip the normals here on the polygon so you can see that you know looking at it from this way, we see right through the polygon. So all the polygons normals have been inverted, so we can basically map the texture to the inside of the dome. And then what I want to show you is the UV. So if we take a look at the UVs, what I did was I went into my top view like this, and then I did a flat projection down. So if I was doing that in, say, Moto, I'd just do project from view, and then once I had that projected, then I just did a simple relax here to relax all the UVs. So they ended up getting a view UVs that look like this. So then if we jump back over to um, Photoshop, what I did was I just went out online and just quickly found uh, kind of a nighttime image. And this particular image was actually a panoramic, so it was not into in this um, sphere uh, mode. It was just a complete panoramic image. And so once I had that pano image, what I did was I went up to filter, and uh, you know I always lose this when I do this. Let's see here. Um, I think it's under. Uh, give me a second here. There it is under distort polar coordinates. And then what I did was I just did the rectangular to por uh, polar, and then uh, then I get this image. So now that I kind of have like this kind of spherical uh, ball image, or kind of like something that would look like if you were using using um, an IBL or an image-based lighting kind of technique, and then once you actually map that to the UVs that look like this, the effect that you get is this here. So you end up getting a really nice, uh, let's see if I can turn off my grid here. So if we kind of look at this from the bottom up, Here's what that that mapping looks like, and it and it's a good technique. I, I really like this, and it works really well for me. Uh, this is the way I do all my sky domes. And again, if you kind of look at this, if since we did this kind of horizontal squeeze like this, if you kind of zoom in, you can see that you know it really gives, if, especially if you look at it in a certain angle, really gives the clouds that that perspective, that real world perspective in the sky like that. So let's go ahead and turn off our fog. Let's bring our scene back up. So that's how I did the background for this. So that was something new. Um, in the breakout videos, uh, you've you've uh, probably seen where I've actually discussed how I did the particle effect. Um, ended up running a um, a light. Let's see where is my firelight here. So. This is it here. So I just have a, a script here that basically just flickers the light, so it kind of you know makes it a little bit more realistic there, uh, lighting in the scene. 
And then the next thing I did was um, I started to use some image effects. So that's how I got this really nice blur effect. And uh, the image effects in Unity are really nice. And um, if you haven't really had a chance to play with them very much, it's a really good way to um, add some, some real punch to, to the look of your game. And so you can see here that we're getting a really nice depth of field look. It's really easy to do. So if we have the camera, you can see that I have two um, effects here. I've got the bloom and depth of field. Now, image effects are only a available with Unity Pro, uh, but once you have that, what you would do is you would come over to your asset, and then you would say import package, and then if we, let's see if it's not getting cut off, no, it's right here, so um, in order to get to all the image effects, you would just import a package, and then you can see that you'll have this image effects pro only, so you would just import in this package, and that's going to come with all the scripts and shaders that you need to apply these type of effects, and then once you have that, what you would do is you would just come under component, you'll have a new image effects drop down here, and then these are all the image effects that you can do, and there's a ton of them, and so what I ended up using was this bloom for Unity 4 HDR lens flare, so I applied that to my scene, and then you just have some some basic uh, parameters here that you can control to uh, increase or uh, bloom and things like that into the scene. Now, of course, these are going to be uh, performance hogs, so. Um, you know, depending on on you know your game and, and your project and things like that, you're you know you're going to want to you know use these sparingly. But um, for the most part, though, and you know, and especially on modern GPUs and things, I mean, they really do they really do sing. I mean, you can really you know utilize a lot of these effects, and it's not going to you know kill your performance or anything. Especially for this demo, like I ended up just taking this and and rendering a movie out of it. So just screen capturing this gameplay window and put it in my presentation. So, of course, there was no presentation hit on that at all. But so we have this bloom uh, and then the depth of field here. And so the depth of field is pretty easy to set up. Uh, you just, you know, throw the image effect on there and, you know, let it go. And so you have this nice feature here called visualize. So if I check this, what it does is it basically renders a depth pass for my scene. And so this allows me to see what's going to be in focus and what's not, hence, hence the uh, check mark here for visualize. And then you can just sit there and, and change your focal size and your focal distance. So as I start to just uh, move my uh, focal distance, you can see that I can actually change uh, where the depth of field is going to be. So in this case, the black area or the black black shading is going to be what's in really sharp focus and the white areas are going to be out of focus so if we're holding this in this area here and then we uncheck the visualize option you can see where that focus here is so if I start to change my focal distance you can actually see you know the effect being shifted here into my scene so I can actually push the focal distance all the way back to say where the waste drum is or I can move it all the way up here to the foreground uh, basically where I had the sign here is what I wanted to do and so again it's, it's really simple uh, to do that and so uh, here we'll go ahead and just stop the gameplay uh, right now. And the next thing that we want to look at is how I actually did the camera. So for the camera, um, I added a new animation component. So let's go up under the component, go to miscellaneous, and grab animation. So now I have this new animation component here. And then we'll go to our window, animation editor. So I actually already have this open here. So you can see that I have a docked animation. And I have camera selected. So you see that our main camera here is... Um, available for us to edit some animation clips. Now I actually cover uh, how the this, this uh, graph editor works and everything like that in some of the breakout courses so I won't go into um, a lot of detail in that but for uh, the sake of this video I'm just going to kind of run through how I actually did this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new clip and I'm just going to leave this as new animation we'll save it and so now I have a clip that we can work with and so right here inside of our animations you can see that uh, the size is set to one meaning that there is one new animation animation clip um, applied to this. And so what we're going to do at this point is uh, we're going to go ahead and just start adding some keyframes to this. So we have new animation. Uh, let's go ahead and just scroll back here and let's start to, and now I have this set to show animated. Uh, so right now I want to make sure this is set to show all. So with show animated, I'm not seeing any of my channels because I don't have any channels animated. So make sure this is set to show all. And now I have the ability to work with my position XYZ and my rotation XYZ. And so what I would do at this point uh, is start just creating some keyframes. And so I'm going to have my perspective view open and my camera view so I can kind of see through the camera itself. If you notice here at the top of the UI, our transport controls 
are now turned red, which means we're kind of in this animation mode. And so what I'm going to do at this point is for the X, I'm going to go ahead and right over this channel here, I'm just going to click this little box and I'm going to say add a key. And so now you see that we've added a keyframe. And so now we've got this uh, time editor that we can work with. So we can go ahead and scroll this. So let's just say that, you know, and this is here, think of this as in seconds. Uh, so let's just go up to make, say, maybe like, um, uh, let's see, well, I'm going to change this number to something fairly high. So maybe like 300. Well, let's do maybe something like 120 frames, basically. Well, it puts me around two seconds. Uh, let's do 300. All right, so now that I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, I'm going to add a key at that point. And so now that I've done that, you can see this bar here is going to allow me to kind of zoom out on my time. And so now you can see that we have two keyframes. So at this point, at this keyframe, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to just drag uh, my X here. So I'm actually going to start to uh, setting a keyframe here for this. And so maybe we'll push this in at this point. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and start to pull back on the Z so can we've got this effect now what I can actually do is I can scrub my timeline so you can see that I start to create uh, this effect here um, I can also just go ahead and hit play and so you can see this working here in the in the 3d view in our camera view so we start to look at our camera our camera move here and then the next thing I did was I was like okay well that looks pretty good for that uh, here we can actually see our keyframes if we wanted to we can actually uh, right click here let's do it on where it's not getting cut off from the screen capture but I can actually go through and I can change the way uh, the interpretation relation between these keyframes are working so we've got our tangents here left and right and both tangents can be free constant or linear uh, we can do free smooth uh, flat things like that so we can actually start to create some ease in and ease out with this so I may select uh, these keyframes here and I may say something like free smooth and now I actually have these little tangent handles that I can start to work with if I wanted to um, but we'll here we'll go ahead and just leave those for now and so now let's say that we were here at 300 uh, let's go ahead and change this to something like, say, um, maybe now we'll go up to uh, maybe 450 in time. And I'm going to set uh, an, uh, add a key for this here as well. And now we'll just kind of zoom our timeline back. And then at this point here, I may want to kind of start to push in on our scene and kind of push over a little bit here on our X. Um, pull this guy back just enough so what I did was I just kind of made sure that kind of snapped into focus and now you can see as we start to scrub our timeline you can see that well we've got our our pan move and then we got our keyframes and then we, we start to do our push in here and then I may want to introduce a little bit of why uh, for that so I'm just gonna hit this button here which is gonna snap me over to the next keyframe and then I'm just gonna kind of pull up on the y-axis a little bit here so I can uh, kind of frame this shot up a little bit better and so now you can see that uh, here's the effect that we get so that's basically how I work through the whole entire scene and I just kind of time things out and I just kind of worked and, and got myself this nice little camera move and then once I did that as you saw before we created an animation clip and so that clip is just stayed here. Um, it's right here in my scene as camera move. Now I could actually, I call this camera move, but you know, this could have been, you know, this will actually animate any object. So let's say that, you know, I had another game object in my scene. I grabbed the animator uh, clip to that and I, you know, placed this object here on onto that clip, it would animate in the scene as well. And that's the power of these these uh, animation clips because they're basically like containers for uh, keyframes and curves. And you can apply those to several different objects in your scene or numerous objects, you know, in your scene at the same time. And it doesn't have to be the same object. So it's they're, they're really powerful. And it's nice to have this control. Now, I could have gone out to my 3D program and, you know, animated the camera there and then imported the camera in via FBX and things like that. But, you know, and, and, and I almost did that because, you know, there are some extra controls in a 3D program that you don't get in Unity, such as motion path curves and things like that. Now, there are some really great uh, asset store uh, tools that you can get that will allow you to visualize motion paths and stuff like that. But you can see that if you're on a budget and you don't want to have to, like, buy something new every single time you have a project, you can do this right here inside of Unity, and it's pretty powerful. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of uh, close out uh, this video. Um, it's kind of a short one, but I uh, wanted to do something a little different. Um, it's been uh, kind of a hectic time here getting ready for Unite. Uh, very excited to be able to go. Uh, first time going to Unite. Uh, and so just kind of wanted to just kind of show a piece of the demo scene that I've been working on and um, and how things are coming together and how I was able to uh, utilize my image effects, this camera move and the background and things like that to kind of further augment this scene and, uh, you know, make it a little bit better for my presentation. So thanks a lot for watching.